prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save all. Amen. O God, O God, the Master, Father Almighty, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, and Thou, the Holy Spirit, one God and one power, have mercy upon me, a sinner, and according to Thy divine judgment, save me, Thy unworthy servant. For blessed are Thy unto the ages and ages of men. Come, let us worship God, our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. Save me, O God, by thy name, and vindicate me by thy might. Hear my prayer, O God, give ear to the words of my mouth. For insolent men have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before them. Behold, God is my helper, the Lord is the upholder of my life. He will requite mine enemies to evil. In thy faithfulness put an end to them. With a free will offering I will sacrifice to thee. I will sing, I will give thanks to thy name, O Lord, for it is good. For thou hast delivered me from every trouble, and thine eye has looked in triumph on mine enemies. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend to me and answer me. I am overcome by my trouble. I am distraught by the noise of the enemy because of the oppression of the wicked. For they bring trouble upon me and in anger they cherish enmity against me. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me and horror overwhelms me. And I say, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. Yea, I would wander afar, I would lodge in the wilderness, I would haste to find me a shelter from the raging wind and tempest. Destroy their plans, O Lord, confuse their tongues, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it on its walls, and mischief and trouble are within it. Ruin is in its midst, oppression and fraud do not depart from its marketplace. It is not an enemy who taunts me, then I will bear it. It is not an adversary who deals insolently with me. Then I will hide from him. But it is you, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We used to hold sweet converse together. Within God's house we walked in fellowship. Let death come upon them. Let them go down to Sheol alive. Let them go away in terror into their graves. But I call upon God, and, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon I have my complaint and moan, and he will hear my voice. He will deliver my soul in safety from the battle that they wage, for many are arrayed against me. God will give ear and humble them, he who is enthroned from of old, because they keep no law and do not fear God. My companion stretched out his hand against his friends, he violated his covenant. His speech was smoother than butter, yet war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. But thou, O God, shalt cast them down into the lowest pit. Men of blood and treachery shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, who abides in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your habitation, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will give his angels charge of you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Be 
because he pleads to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. The angelic powers were at my tomb. The gods became as dead men. Mary stood by thy grave, seeking thy most known body. Thou didst capture hell, not being tempted by it. Thou didst come to the virgin, granting life. O Lord, who didst rise from the dead, glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O righteous Father Jacob, adornment of Atka and the Yukon Delta, thou didst offer thyself as a living sacrifice to bring life to a searching people. Offspring of Russian America, flower of brotherly unity, healer of sickness and bearer of demons. O Holy Father Jacob, pray to Christ God that our souls may be saved. Now and ever and unto the ages of ages, Amen. As there is no boldness in us because of the multitude of our sins, do thou, O Virgin, fail to intercede with the Son whom thou hast born. For the entreaty of a mother has great power to win the favor of the Master. Despise not, O all venerable ladies, the prayers of sinners, for he who took upon himself to suffer for our sake is merciful and strong to save. Let thy tender mercies, O Lord, speedily go before us, for we are become exceeding poor. Help us, O God, of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. O Lord, deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. When Christ God, the giver of life, raised all of the dead from the valleys of misery with his right hand, he bestowed resurrection on the human race. He is the Savior of all the resurrection, the life, and the God of all. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. The one that you will yesterday, 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 the one that you will yesterday. Eksho Maharana, 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 Eksho Maharana. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Thou who at every season and every hour in heaven and on earth art worshipped and glorified. O Christ, our God, who art long-suffering, merciful, and compassionate, who lovest the just and showest mercy upon the sinner, who callest all to salvation,
the promise of blessings to come. O Lord, in this hour receive our supplications and direct our lives according to thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, hallow our bodies, correct our thoughts, cleanse our minds. Deliver us from all tribulations, evil and distress. Compass us about with thy holy angels, that guided and guarded by them we may attain to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of thine unapproachable glory. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim, without defilement, thou gavest birth to God the Word. Through Theotokos, we magnify thee. In the name of the Lord, give the blessing, Master. Amen. O God, the Lord of hosts and author of all creation, who in thy ineffable tender mercy has set down thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the salvation of our kind, and through his holy cross has torn up the handwriting of our sins, and thereby triumphed over the princes and dominions of darkness. Do thou, O Master, who lovest mankind, accept these prayers of thanksgiving and supplication, even from us sinners, and deliver us from every deadly and evil and dark transgression, and from all visible and invisible enemies that seek to do us harm. Nail our flesh with the fear of thee, and let not our hearts incline to evil words or thoughts, but wound our souls with thy love, set ever gazing upon thee, guided by thy light and beholding thee, the eternal light that no man can approach. We may send up unceasing praises and thanksgiving unto thee, the Father without beginning, together with thine only begotten Son, and thy most holy foot in thy giving spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. So God be gracious and be a sinner and have mercy upon you. God be gracious and be a sinner and have mercy upon you. God be gracious and be a sinner and have mercy upon you. O heavenly King, O comforter of the spirit of truth, for all places and fill us all things. For if you have blessings and give her life, come and abide in us, cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, O gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace to the among men. Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace to the among men. O Lord, thou shalt my lips and my mouth shall declare thy praise. Blessed are God, always now and ever, for ages of ages. Amen. May the Lord God give you this kingdom, always now and ever, for ages of ages. Amen. May the Lord God direct your steps into every good work. Bless, Master. Let us pray. 
kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
him out. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a man, mute and demon-possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never seen like this in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casts out demons by the ruler of the demons. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Come to my house, just give the word, and my servant will be healed. We have the demoniac of the Gadarenes of the Gergesenes, when the Lord had crossed the waters. And they come running up to him, and that, that is something that is very confusing to me. Because St. John Chrysostom would say that you know there are those who came of their own. And there are those who are unable to come of their own, like someone demon-possessed. And they need someone to bring them. Because we hear about that in the Gospel today, that they brought people who were sick and infirmed and demon-possessed, and the Lord cast out the spirits. But when the Lord crossed the sea, it seemed that that was a divine appointment, that he was going there specifically to deliver those two men from possession. And they came running up to him. And then last week we had the paralytic. And we all know that when someone is sick, the last thing we want is to be seen. And to think that a paralytic would allow his friends to carry him through the city, through the marketplace, and take him somewhere, in public places, it showed not only their faith that they loved this man and that they believed Christ could do it, but the faith of the paralytic. That he was willing to let people see him in his condition. Sometimes as priests, when we want to go to the hospital, people say, well, they're not ready to see anybody yet. They haven't combed their hair. They, you know, they, they just don't feel their appearance as though that really matters somebody's in the hospital and direly ill. But in today's gospel, they were persistent. They kept crying out, Son of David, have mercy. And our Lord's response was, do you believe that I am able to do this? 
And what I find interesting, and as I've been looking at these Gospels over the last few weeks, our Lord does not say, I will pray the Father, and he will do it. These are all demonstrations of his power as the one who created us from the dust of the earth, showing his divinity and letting his divinity shine forth. He doesn't say, I will pray. He says, do you believe that I am able to do this? And by the power of his own word, he delivers people. This is why I say to people, when I saw those bracelets years ago, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I said, yes, that may be what Jesus would do, but that's not what I can do. Because I can't say it by my own authority. I can say, I will pray. St. John Chrysostom on this, uh, no, excuse me, Metropolitan Anthony Bloom, I was looking at his homily on this. He says, why weren't everybody healed? Why wasn't everybody healed? And Metropolitan Anthony Bloom says, perhaps not everybody was ready to be healed. I think of the people in Gadarene with the demoniac, when they saw this man who had been cutting himself and living amongst the tombs, sitting in his right mind, the thought had to be going through their head, this man is different. And this man, these two men who were delivered, are different. And now they wanted to follow Christ. And he told them, go and speak the great things that God has done for you in one of the other Gospels. But what did they say? Go away. They had the possibility of being made whole. But what would that look like? What would that require of them? I think of another divine appointment, the woman of Samaria, Samaria, the woman at the well. It said the Lord had need to go through Samaria. The Jews never traveled through Samaria. The, the, the tense and voice and mood and the Greek language there indicates that of his own need, he had, he had to go through Samaria rather than crossing the Jordan. He had an appointment. He needed to meet this woman. And so there are times where Christ searches people out, and there are times where people search him out. And the people that search him out is a demonstration of their faith. And really, it, it kind of flies in the face of the Jewish leadership that every time he was doing a miracle, they would find some excuse to criticize. And sometimes they didn't challenge the miracle, they challenge the day on which it was done. They wouldn't even acknowledge the miracle occurred. They just said, like, with, is this your son who you say was born blind? Just trying to discredit. But as we look at the two men today, the two blind men, they come with persistence. They're not going to give up. They're not going to leave until they get an answer. I think of the Syrophoenician woman who came on behalf of her daughter that was severely demon-possessed, and our Lord says, not fit to give the children's bread to the dogs. And even when he said that, he was showing the dedication, the commitment of this woman. Years ago, when I first became a priest, I had a parishioner tell me, and I'm not saying anything out of turn or anybody's confession. She says, I have a friend that hasn't been in church in 20 years. And she has breast cancer. She wants to return to the church. And I spoke to the woman. She said, I realize I've neglected the church. I've neglected Christ. Will you hear my confession? Will you pray for me? I said, absolutely. The church is a hospital, 
not a poor girl. We did all of that. Communion. Go see her in the hospital. Go see her afterwards. And she says, I will be in church the very first opportunity. Never, I think that she came once. Two years later, Father, the cancer is back. The cancer is back. Will you pray for me? Of course I'll pray for you. But there's a time we have to learn to pray for ourselves. And as we think of the words of Metropolitan Anthony Bloom, are, are we ready to be healed? Several years back when I decided it was time to lose weight, I went through the cabinet and I said, it's time. Everything that was empty carbs, cereals, potato chips, pretzels, took it all out to the dumpster. I said, I'm done. I don't go down that aisle. Went to the gym six days a week. I lost 110 pounds by the grace of God. But, you know, it's easier to talk about what we need to do and say that we want it. And when our physical health is under attack, and we know without any shadow of a doubt it's under attack, we're willing to go to any length, any measure, and submit ourselves to all kinds of things at the hands of the doctors. And I used to say I wasn't afraid of dying, I was afraid of what the doctors will do to me before I die. But we will go through all kinds of things. But when it's a sickness of the soul, something that we don't necessarily see or maybe easily perceive, or perhaps we've noticed that we've been more irritable and agitated over the last couple of months. What are we doing about it? And as I, I consider, David says in the Psalms, if I was not afflicted, I would not have turned to you. And when we do the unction service, and we ask for the healing of soul and body, I always let people know, I said, sometimes, you know, the illness is what brings us back to God. And we may not be healed physically, but what's more important is our relationship with God is healed and made whole. We think of the ten lepers. All ten were healed. Only one came to give thanks. The other nine, they just went back to life as usual. But as I looked at Metropolitan Anthony Bloom's homily, are we ready to be healed? It was on healing. It was for this particular Sunday. If God were to heal us of a physical infirmity that was life-threatening, would it make a difference on how we live out the rest of our days? Or do we just go back to life as usual? And as we look at this gospel, the more important healing is the healing of the soul, that we're prepared to meet God, and that we have life, and that life more abundant. And as I think of what I did going through all the cabinets and getting rid of all the stuff that was contrary to actually losing weight and being healthy or healthier. Are we willing to do what needs to be done for the healing of our soul? Our soul. So that we're truly ready to meet Christ. Let me just say this. If I want to lose weight, then I have to say, put down the fork. <laughs> Get up from the table. St. Mark the ascetic said that we beg and plead with God to deliver us from our sins and our passions, but we love their causes. If we want to be delivered from our sinful inclinations, 
And we want to be redirected toward the heavenly kingdom. Put down the remote control. <laughs> Shut it off. <laughs> Find your Bible. Dust it off. It's not just a piece on the table to look nice as a, a, a prop. We know what props are because we've heard a lot about that lately. You can tell people that read their Bibles because the pages begin to have the oil of their skin and their fingers. And you can see Bibles that look like, I don't know if this has been open. The pages are still sticking together. If we want to be made whole, we have to cultivate a life of prayer. We have to spend time in His presence. And that takes work. It takes effort. And when we come to prayer, Metropolitan Anthony Bloom will say that many of us will flee from it because of the fear of judgment, not in the eternal sense, but in the temporal sense that we know that we've not been as faithful in prayer. And as a judgment of ourselves, but God is simply pleased that we're there. And we need that prayer because for Orthodox Christians, salvation is not legal, it's not legislative, it's not that I said the right words, the passwords, and I got my ticket. Salvation is relational. I need to get up. I need to do my morning prayers. But not just say prayers, but have communion with God. Where I talk to Him and spend time in silence and let Him talk to me. Spend time in reading the Holy Scriptures because it will clarify our vision of how we see the world, how we see God and how we see ourselves. Because the stuff that we're getting on that one-eyed demon, the television, is a distorted view of mankind. It's a distorted view of humanity. It's a distorted view of God if they have one at all. And so brothers and sisters, do we want to be made whole. What does that look like? And what's it going to cost? I've been going for physical therapy for my arm and shoulder because of pain. And I think, which do I dislike more? The physical therapy or the pain? Am I willing to live with the pain and avoid the therapy? Or am I willing to do the therapy so that I can be better. M. Scott Peck in his book, The Road Less Traveled, said that most of us stay where we are until the discomfort of staying where we are becomes greater than the discomfort of not changing. Does that make sense? Do I need to say that again? Yes. We stay where we are until the discomfort of staying there becomes greater than the discomfort of changing and moving up to the next plateau. Are we truly ready to set aside all of our worldly things that we are so nailed down to and really pursue the things of the kingdom so that it's not just that we're seeking physical help, because what are we going to do with it? But we're actually seeking the spiritual help so that we are already partakers of the kingdom, already being made whole, and that our vision is being clarified, that we begin to see as Christ sees. We begin to offer ourselves, our lives, and realize that we're willing to lay down our life for others, and it's no longer about me. It's about Him and serving Him and my neighbor. Let us offer the holy oblation in peace. Let us
for those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people who are present, who wait to thy great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Yeah. 
we offer to thee the sprouts on bloodless worship. We ask thee, we pray thee, we supplicate thee. Send down thy Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here offering. And make this bread the precious body of thy Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup the precious blood of thy Christ. Amen. Changing them by thy Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And to those who shall partake thereof, may be the purification of soul and body, and the forgiveness of sins, and the union of the Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, for boldness for thee, none of the judgment nor in the condemnation. Again, we offer to thee this reasonable worship for those who have fallen asleep in faith, ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and joyous, Alicia, and the Pope, and ever Virgin Mary.
and fixed before the great judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask.
God, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. We have seen God. Thou didst show upon the precious life of the cross, 
We pray here, O God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth. For those who are far off upon the sea and in the air, show mercy, show mercy, O Master, upon us sinners, and be gracious to us. For thou, o Christ our God, art the peace, Christ our peace. And thou hast broken down the little wall of separation between us and unto thee, this cry, glory together with thy fathers and everlasting. And all holy, the life in the Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of age.
I'm 62 this year. <laughs> <laughs> he was ordained like a month or two after I was born. <laughs> my, my gray, I'm just prematurely gray. Uh, also, anniversary of Natalie and Glenn, Glenn Treese. Uh, July the 29th, John and Mary Ellen Usich, July the 29th. Birthdays, Tim Marasco on the 26th, Tony Gall the 26th, Sandy Wood the 27th, Olga Womer the 27th, Patty Kaznowski the 27th, Reader Christopher Rakowski the 28th, Anthony Onufer Sr. the 30th, Claire Yerke, July 31st, Gloria Mount Maliniak, July 31st, Natalie Zuro, the 31st, and the newly married Stephen and Christina Bellot on the 19th. themselves headlong into pits and things like that. Uh, we're not used to denying ourselves, and I think that's why we see all this unrest. Uh, when I, we celebrated Father's Day in Mechanicsburg, I realized for the first time, I think, that how many people are missing a father figure, that have a father figure in this day and age. It's not like when we were growing up. They have no role model. They have no frame of reference. And for many of us, who our father is and our relationship has a direct bearing on who we perceive God to be, no matter how wrong that image may be, because God the Father is the archetype of true fatherhood, and all of our earthly fathers certainly fall short of that in some way or another. And my dad, I said, you know, we didn't come with instructions. There are eight of us. And you can't treat us all the same, because we all have different dispositions. But anyways, as we've continued through this early on, I know people were calling one another and checking and doing wellness checks. If you haven't been doing that, like, that would encourage you to pick up the phone and call a few people a week. And it is just so unnatural for us to be in isolation, for people to not see another human face for weeks on end. If you know parishioners, if you know people, if you have neighbors that are by themselves, call them and say, would you mind if we just came over and sat under a tree where you feel safe? And just have a cold drink and just let them see another human being. I mean, we have the icon of the Trinity as an icon of community because even in the Trinity, there's community which is a reflection of the church and the family, that we need each other. So please, as part of your journey in becoming Christ-like, reach out to those who are alone. And, you know, we may feel lonely ourselves, but the cure for that is to find someone who feels more lonely than ourselves. <laughs> and you know, my father confessor told me years ago, because I wouldn't ask for help, 
And he said, you know, how does it make you feel when you're able to help someone? It makes us feel good. He said, who are you to deprive someone? Who are you to deprive someone else of feeling good if you need help? Who are you to deprive someone else of that opportunity to feel good about themselves? So if we need something, let someone know. Let them feel good about themselves. And you know what? We will feel better about ourselves when we reach out and help. Does the camera go off at this point? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure Father Stephen will have more now.